four, three, two, one, wait, go. Hey gamers, this is Kida, and today we have a very special playthrough of Ocarina of Time. I have some people here to help me commentate. I'm ZFG. I'm Captain. That's it, that's all we got. So, anyway. what, what is what is this run we're doing here? Uh, I'm glad you asked. Ocarina of Time Pacifist. The goal is to beat the game without attacking a single enemy or a cuckoo. Um, I, th I think living things such as grass don't count. You can kill grass, but any actual enemies you can't kill. Okay, so, so vegetarian but not vegan. That's one way of putting it. What about horses? You, you, can't, you can't kill horses in this game. Um, I don't know. Did I mention this run was made by OMG a tree? Even if I did, oh, yeah. I'll mention it again. He he made the route and did it. Actually, Nerds with the Game helped with the route as well, and like figured out how to make it possible. But basically, this was all done by OMG a tree. So shout out to him. Yeah, it seems like there's going to be some issues with figuring out how to do this when there's. Normally, many things you need to kill in this game. So I wonder how we're going to get past all these obstacles without killing any enemies. Oh yeah, I actually have no idea what's going on in this. I had Kaf to watch the run so that he would know, but... Basically, I could just ask questions as I think of them. All right, so I'll cool. basically serve as what Chad is thinking. I just kind of skim through it. Yeah, no one's actually going to know what's going on. No, I, I have not seen it. I have lightly skimmed through it. How many re-records is it? Do we know how many re-records it was? Um... I don't know. Oh wait, yeah I do. 28,605. Alright. So, this probably took a, a decent amount of time to make then. So, a fun fact is that this run started out as a real TAS, and then he kind of dropped it after about 12 minutes. So, once February 21st was rolling around, I asked him to pick it back up again as a low tide, so that's kind of what happened. Okay. Now, 12 minutes as in 12 minutes of the full run, which is like a lot of task work, not just 12 minutes of trying it. Alright, so it looks like we're just collecting some rupees. And straight up buying, I guess, stick and nuts here. Or maybe just stick. And for those that haven't seen a TAS before, side hopping is... Young Link is faster. Yeah, as a child you always want to side hop pretty much everywhere in a TAS. Now a low Ted on the other hand, that's another story. Yep, and also here is Z sliding. So if you, I believe, just hold forward and press Z every other frame, you can keep that speed and move backwards. It's sort of similar to a Super Slide or a Hess, but um, pressing Z every other frame like that makes your speed unaffected by slopes. And so that can also be used for forest escape there. So something that I'm at first thinking of is that, like, since you can't fight any enemies, that means you can't beat any bosses. So you can't beat any dungeons, and you also can't, like, fight Ganondorf or Ganon or anything. 
Yeah, so that means wrong warping from dungeons is not going to be the solution. And fighting Ganon is not going to be a solution. Is it no killing or no fighting? I believe it's no fighting at all, period, right? Yeah, you can't attack any enemies. Just try talking it out with him instead. Yeah, that's the goal. The goal of this is just to, to peacefully resolve conflicts. Maybe it'll involve talking, who knows. Most likely. You'll oh, notice in the talking. credits that you get all yellow names. Okay, I actually have no idea where he's going now, so like, I don't even know what questions I'm supposed to be uh, asking. My, my guess is straight to Kakariko. I assume bottle is important, so probably getting bottle first. Oh. Oh, we're going around the owl. Or not. Oh. Oh, we gotta pick up some nuts. He just attacked that tree. Oh no. Yeah, it's not living things, it's probably animated things. Animals, if you will. No, we're not attacking the Kekos. They are being peacefully handled. I'm sure there's like a few of you that have never seen this before. If you collect all seven Kukos, you get a bottle for Yeah, and that bottle is typically very important for Ocarina of Time speedruns. Oh, the jump slash. The jump slash is really precise. You can use it to skip using a Koko to fly over that gap. Alright, so here's the bottle. Where are we going now? Is My prediction is... Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh wow, you can do that with just a slash. That's cool. Hmm, reminds me of M.M. Oh yeah, the Ocarina does. Yeah, so he's doing a glitch right right here uh, called Blank A, where if uh, on the specifically on the 1.0 version, if you have an item in your hand, when you uh, cl go into crawl space, you can use a Deku Nut on the first possible frame, and it'll interrupt going into the crawl space, and it kind of still messes up Link's uh, collision, and so you can use that modified collision from that glitch to clip out of bounds really quickly, and go straight to the basement. And then from the basement, he can use the invisible water here to clip out of bounds and go to the bomb chews early. And um, so there's been a bunch of water here because all the water, uh, there's shallow water that goes all around Bomb of the Well, but that shallow water extends downwards infinitely. 
we could use that out of bounds water to swim all the way to that like light cage and grab both of these chests that both happen to have shields in them. So went to the bottom of the well just for bomb shoes, Highland shield, and deck of shields. Yes, pacifist does include Ganon. No fighting Ganon. No fighting Dark Link. I can't nice wait to see how. Game. Go ahead. Oh, isn't this camera needed for the drawbridge? Oh, probably, yeah. Yeah, so there, by having the camera face away from the bridge, um, as long as the bridge isn't loaded while it's when it turns nighttime, it's supposed to go up at night, but if it's not loaded, then it won't actually move up, and so he can get on the chains uh, and then move the camera towards the bridge to have it loaded, and then as soon as it loads, it just goes straight up and then warps Link with it. Does this mean we get to watch the Zelda's lullaby cutscene? That's the only reason we'd be here, right? Maybe, maybe we do. That's a, that's a cutscene that I remember very well from these types of runs. That's my favorite cutscene in the game. Oh, so this is a really neat optimization. So, in Hyrule Castle, uh, you have to leave and re-enter the area for Malin to spawn. She only spawns on your second time loading the area. And so what he did there is void out from void out from the vines, and that way he doesn't have to go back into uh, back into market and then back out here. It might seem slow at first, but he has to wait until it turns daytime because of the egg here. And so that by voiding out there instead of going back back into castle and then going forward, it passes more daytime and avoids more time where time is frozen. So a neat little optimization. And then the health has to he has to make his health low for an upcoming cutscene skip, I would assume. Or he just likes the sound of heart beeps. Could be. Nice little seam walk there. You can walk out of bounds from a uh, that little corner. Wait, how's he gonna get into the castle without killing Taylon? Uh, good point. I guess. I guess he's gonna peacefully tell him to go away. Oh, hey, it worked. Nice double chew mega flip. So the guards here, as long as you do frame perfect side hops, they can't catch you. So for a task, this section is trivial. You just don't even care. See ya. Oh good. Alright, anyone that has a pee, go ahead. I'll wait for you. Here's your bathroom break. Yeah, so this cutscene is just to get Zelda's letter and Zelda's lullaby. Probably just for the lullaby. Yeah, most likely letter is typically not useful unless you're doing hundo or something that requires a mask for some other reason. Does anyone actually know what this cutscene's about? Like, what's happening here? 
Uh, Zelda asked Link if Link uh, got the Kakiri Emerald, and he obviously did not, as we did not see that. But she forces him to say yes, and um, forces Link to be a liar. So, I mean, we are, you know, about resolving conflicts by talking and stuff, but I guess lying is still a part of it. Sometimes you have to lie in order to mediate. I wonder what Ganon was thinking when he looked out the window. He was thinking about the nice, peaceful talks they'll have in the near future. Yeah, after Link doesn't kill Ganon, they have peace talks. I think that's the peace treaty that we just got. Oh, that's good. Oh, it looks like even though we're not fighting anything, Link still dies. Sacrifices have to be made. So that was just a cutscene skip. You die as soon as you enter the cutscene there. And you get the song as soon as this cutscene starts and don't have to watch the whole thing. Going over to Lon Lon now. Yeah, I think on this playthrough, Link just has to flirt with all the girls. Interesting. So learning a Pona song, I wonder what that could be used for. Uh, maybe calling a Pona. True. Yeah, that's it. The more friends Link makes, the better. Ah, uh, I, I see the logic in that. Oh yeah, milking cows. <laughs> that doesn't count that, as an attack. It, I, I think the, the explosion just barely missed a Pona. I don't even know what's in this room. The shop. We're buying a po. Probably used for RBA is my guess. Now I know what you're thinking. What are we doing in the Temple of Time? We don't have the three spiritual stones. What? 
Well, that that would be a, a good reason to not go in there right now. Okay, please tell me there's at least one person here that doesn't know about Door of Time Skip. I'm, sh I'm sure just, there's a, a small handful that don't know about it. In this stream? Yeah, you never know. There, there's new people. There's a lot of people here. A few of them will be new. But yes, you can clip out of bounds and then clip back in bounds and go past the door. Alright, anyone else that has to use the bathroom, just hold it in. Because this is a pretty good cutscene, you don't want to miss it. Oh yeah, my favorite cutscene. I can give some lore on February 21st for those that don't know. Oh yeah, that basically. Be good to over. Yeah, so it all started. It was a dark and stormy night, February 21st, 2015. Majora's Mask in Two Pauses just naturally finished and uploaded to YouTube that day. And then one year later, Ocarina of Time 100% in three pauses coincidentally, nay, through fate, was uploaded on the same exact day, February 21st. So by that time, it had to be a tradition. And every year since then, we've done a low TED, commentated, and put it on YouTube for the tradition. And all of them being just like interesting challenge type runs using very... Uh, interesting and unique glitches to achieve some kind of strange goal. Or unusual goal, I guess. What what are all the the historical February 21st low tads? So the first one was MM2 pause. The second one was OOT 100% 3 pause. After that it was reverse boss order? Correct. Yeah, reverse boss order the next year. The year after that was... Uh, what was last year? All Fairy Rewards, No Human in Dungeons. Right, yeah. Uh, Majora's Mask, All Fairy Reward, No Human in Dungeons. And then we are here, 2019, with the Pacifist run. And something else afterwards. All Dungeons there... No Doors was not one of them because it was finished like six months beforehand. Like it it was finished in like September and you know, I don't think anyone wanted to wait six months for uh to release All Dungeons No Doors. Yeah, I was gonna say there's been several other low tads that have is existed. It's just that there's always one on February twenty first. Yeah. All dungeons, no doors, just couldn't wait. Too good. I think that was more TAS like, more, at least a Moted medium. You're talking about uh, all dungeons, no doors? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was pretty good. It wasn't like super sloppy or anything. Called a lombre. <laughs> All right, so just another save and reset there to get past the door time. And now we're off again. Where to now? 
I'm gonna guess fishing pond to steal the rod to get RBA. Uh, that's, we're in 2019. Not yeah, 2012. I was gonna say that's pretty old school at this point. Probably something involving a Pona. Wait, I've been out of the loop for a while. Does that mean no one does tech tight hover anymore? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Looks like we're gonna start off with some RBA, I assume, I think. Yeah. Alright, so right there, he caught a bottle, or uh, he caught bugs on his B button. And by catching stuff on your B button, it modifies parts of your inventory based on your seat right item. And that's why he got Poe earlier. Poe modifies Bomb Chew count. See, Bomb Chews magically went from 0 to 29. And Bomb Chews are important. Man, gonna steal a pony with bomb shoes. That was pretty cool. Okay, so this proves that stealing is ethical as well as lying. Yep, stealing, lying, and suicide are okay as long as you're not hurting others. This one's pretty wholesome. Alright, so heading back to Kakariko. Gonna guess either getting the egg or hookshot. Yep, getting the egg. So, did we get the Poe just for bomb shoes? And that's it? Probably. I can't imagine any other use for, for Poe. Unless he wants to get down to low health quick. I think killing a Poe is allowed because Poes are already dead. Well, no, a Poe was not killed. Um, this was bought from a shop. Oh, yeah. Killed Dan Bay by going forward in time. Uh, I guess that's true. But that, that wasn't... That wasn't violence. That was... He died of natural causes. It also wasn't our fault. He lived a, a long, good life of ending speedruns. Forty four, oh man. Yeah, sometimes tassers do borrow each other's work. It's very easy to just send the task file to someone else and then someone else can continue working on it. I believe this was only made by uh, OMG a tree, though. I don't think he did it with anyone else. Yeah, it was just him. Yeah. But yeah, that is fairly common for other tasks uh, to have multiple people working on them. Nice exit. Oh, reusing inputs. Uh, I think that happens sometimes, but not quite as often. I can't think of any valid reason why you would go to Death Mountain. Oh, maybe I they're doing magic. Uh, yeah, probably that.
Oh man, the cool way to get magic. Climbing up Death Mountain from out of bounds. Oh, and he even clipped the wall. This was probably the only reason we got a little by. Yeah. Yep. It sucks that magic is so important and magic needs lullaby. Otherwise, the lullaby would not be all that useful. Well, it's still important in a few cases, but magic is pretty much the single most important reason for getting lullaby. Do you need lullaby to get a Pona song? Um, no. I think you no. just need to. You just need to wake up Talon. You mean Talon? Talon, yes. Ooh, nice mega flip. Getting back out of bounds on Death Mountain. Quick way to go down to Goron City. Reminder, this is a low tide. Yeah, low optimization. Yeah, Tree actually did this run extremely quickly. Like, when I asked him to do it, yeah. it only took him like a week, I think, to finish the whole thing. That, that was super sick, actually. He did a an A slide into Weird Clip under the rocks to get out of Goron City. That was super sick. Like, his quality is super good for a week. Yeah. More RBA. Used up all his bomb cheese already. Gotta get more Bob's bomb cheese. Oh, no. That's unfortunate. That's why this is a low TED. That was a technical error. That's too bad. No, so the actual the actual important reason why he did that there is when you have a bottle on your B button and you respawn you die and respawn and you start in the water. Normally when you die with a bottle on your B button, you respawn with a Deku stick on B, but if you respawn in water, you actually have a blank B button, you're swordless. And this has a few interesting properties that I would assume he's going to take advantage of. And uh, you can take out the egg there, and that'll unfreeze King Zora. So if you have a text box, uh, if a text box is on screen as the camera pans towards King Zora when you first load the room, then it'll mess with the red ice loading, and so the red ice doesn't load. Uh, properly when you reload the room, and so... And then he talked to King Zora, and while talking to King Zora, he held the R button, and when doing that, uh, he's normally supposed to give you Zora Tunic, but will instead give you the Eyeball Frog, which he's normally only supposed to give you after giving him Prescription. And that Eyeball Frog has a timer, and that timer may or may not be useful. You're supposed to deliver the Eyeball Frog to the Lake Hylia lab in time, but I don't think he's going to do that. Maybe he needs eye drops. Maybe Ganon can't see, and that's why he was being evil. So if you oh. just give him eye drops, everything gets fixed. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. That's also why he got the egg in Kakariko. Because you need uh, something over your trade slot. Yeah, with, with nothing in your trade slot, the trick will not work, and you'll just get Zora Tunic. Okay. <laughs> 
And so Furrow's Wind, uh, a warping spell, sometimes commonly used for wrong warps. I wonder if we may see that. The King's Aura is blocking the way, but he can use a weird clip to get past it. Taking out Hookshot while uh, moving very fast and alternating control stick directions. What's this for? Oh, He just wanted to show that pause frame and that's it. That's pretty neat. <laughs> Okay, so one interesting advantage of having nothing on your B button is if you get on a ladder and do a uh, glitch where you're sort of on a ladder but sort of not by getting your shield knocked off a ladder, or getting your shield hit while you're on a ladder so you kind of get knocked off a ladder, if you do that without anything on your B button you're actually able to use any item anywhere and that's how he was able to use Furrow's Wind there. That was Link talking out his problems with the Tektite just then. Yeah, totally. Gotta get a fairy to heal. Passing over to Gerudo Valley now, I guess. I wonder what could be going on here. He only has like a minute left to get eye drops. I don't know how he's gonna make it in time. He seems pretty fast. I think he, I think he can make it. Look at the speed. You doubt the speed? Oh, the mega flip. The Mega Flip is very precise and gets you across across the bridge without opponent or long shot. And now we wait. Where's all the carpenters? They're captured. They're trying to talk it out with the guards right now. Okay. Well, there's a Pona. Another interesting thing about Blank B is, well, he's not doing it yet, so I'll wait. I have no idea what I'm watching. Cast desync. Yeah, I love when I desync and accidentally Super swim and climb a ladder. Will you grab the heart piece in time? Oh no. Okay, that's neat. So, uh, when the timer when the timer is about to expire, go to zero. If you void out right as it is expiring, then you get a frozen timer. Now the timer is at zero. And also, uh, Captain, you want to explain this? You were going to explain it, I guess? Oh, yeah. If you have blank B, um, when you're on a Pona, you can use certain items to get off of a Pona, but still be in, like, the opponent riding state. And when you're in the opponent riding state and you hookshot something, I, I don't know why. I guess it has to do with your stored vertical velocity. Um... If you use like Ocarina or something, then it'll make you like fly up really fast. Yeah, basically like anything that kind of cancels the hookshot like that will just cause Link to do a huge jump up. And so that lets him set Furrow's Wind at a strange coordinate. I think it's like, it's essentially setting Furrow's Wind at uh, Zora's Domain coming from Gerudo Valley, I think. 
Which isn't, you know, really a thing, but can be made a thing like this. I mean, I think the... Um, the entrance is still from Zora's River to Zora's Domain, but with the room and coordinates of Gerudo Valley. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So yeah, he's gonna do that same hookshot trick again, except, I guess, go somewhere else this time. So he essentially has another jump stored, and as soon as he gets off Pona, he'll do another really high jump. Yeah, the, the second on the timer, um, if you if you do any kind of warp, like a, a warp song, or an actual warp with Furrow's Wind, it just adds a... It's supposed to set the timer to one second, which then goes to zero immediately and then expires it. But uh, in this case, since it's frozen, it just stays at one. And... <coughs> so there... Uh, he used that jump again to use Furrow's Wind as he entered Lon Lon. And this lets him enter Lon Lon with different coordinates um, than he's supposed to. And now that frozen timer can be unfrozen with certain types of text. And Malin here has a certain type of text to unfreeze the timer. I think. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah, but you have to be on opponent. Yeah, it's on opponent. The... Okay. Yeah, so the timer's gonna unfreeze and the camera's gonna fade out. And that's time. Hyrule is saved. Okay, there's a few of you that might not understood anything that just happened, so let me reiterate. Basically, Wink talked to Malon as a kid, he made friends with her in Epona. And then, as an adult, he talked to her again. Her dad knows Ganondorf, they're good friends. She convinced him to not do bad things, and the day was saved. The end. Good story. Ocarina of Time, the, the masterpiece story of resolving conflict with words. All right, let's just jump into the next run. Oh, wait, for, first you want to actually explain uh, the actual wrong warp, hap how everything happened there? Um, Me? Sure. Right. No, I'm just yeah. Cap, do you know? Well, when he used Ferrari's wind while falling into the range floating zone, um, it set his last entrance at uh, Zora's Domain. So when he went to talk to Malin to start the, I don't know, horse obstacle course, whatever it's called, um, it reactivated the timer and warped him there with the cutscene set for the obstacle course. Yeah, because uh, when you do a wrong warp, it's based off your last entrance, and the entrance, it's not just the map, it's also where you come from, and so it's essentially saying um, Lon Lon Ranch from Zora's Domain, which obviously is not really a thing, but um, this causes, when he unfreezes the timer, um, going into the, the horse race is supposed to start a cutscene, expiring the timer expires the... Um, Expiring the timer causes the warp back that's supposed to happen, and then that causes them to warp back to Zora's Domain with the cutscene that's supposed to start from the horse race, but that cutscene then turns into the credits cutscene. And then here we are in the credits. 